Hi, my name is Helga Jacobson, and I'm going to be talking to you today about demystifying technology, self-authorization, and biotech. I'm a bio artist from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I'm currently enrolled in the Transdisciplinary New Media Program through Paris College of Art. Uh, so I'm going to start by showing you some slides. This is a piece that I began in 2014 titled Relics of Frankenstein's Monster. I had just been accepted into the MAWA Mentorship Program as a mentee, paired with Eleanor Bond, who was an excellent mentor. I was trying to figure out a process for reanimating leaves, so she introduced me to Betsy Thorstensen, who works for the Museum of Man and Nature in Manitoba. She taught me, for, uh, she taught me her process for creating diorama displays of organic material, and I utilized it to create this work. These leaves have been turned into scaffolds. Almost all of the organic material has been removed and replaced with glycerin. I then hand sew the leaves together. In this way, they exist as neither organic nor inorganic. This piece was seminal in that it was the first real work that I had created through using a more scientific approach to materials. My work has always had a biological element to it, often utilizing organic material, uh, but this was really where I started to integrate more uh, scientific procedure. Uh, so my work often reflects upon existence, while I try to find different means of understanding and expressing the interstices between life and death, the organic and the inorganic, often using the metaphor of the body and soul and the house versus home. While I was working on this piece, I was also selected to participate in a workshop titled Toxicity in conjunction with a bio art exhibition put on through Video Pool, which is a new media organization in Winnipeg. The workshop was facilitated by Nikki Sparu, who's a bio artist from Australia. She began the workshop by teaching us how to extract DNA from a banana, which is a really simple experiment often taught in grade schools, but it was fascinating to me because it was an exercise in how easy it can be to explore biology. The photo to the left is an image of the extracted DNA, and the image on the right is a group of agar, plate, agar bacteria plates that we were working on in the workshop. The images at the top of the screen are both close-ups of the bacteria plates that um, that I produced during the workshop. Using cotton swaps, we walked around the room and found orifices, crevices, and other bacteria welcoming areas to collect bacteria from. At, and then we cultured them on the agar plates and let them kind of gestate over the course of the workshop. At the bottom of the screen are images of E. coli, which we created uh, using zones of inhibition around and highlighted with P. glow, uh, which is like green fluorescent protein. I was enamored immediately with the aesthetic of these plates and inspired by the potential drawing capabilities of this medium, which I'd just been presented. All of this was done in an open room in an art space with minimal and mostly low technology. To produce good science, what I discovered in this process was that you, one doesn't need to necessarily be in a laboratory nor have high-tech equipment. Truly, the greatest resources that you actually need are an interest in collaboration, networking skills, and drive. These are a few of the spaces that I've created scientific, scientific works out of um, and experimented in. On the top left is Nikki Sparu, who acted as an excellent guide into making science accessible for me. On the top right are fellow participants in the workshop at Video Pool, uh, which is where we were working. Uh, as you can see in the image, there really isn't a lot of high-tech equipment. I think the highest tech thing that we were really working with um, was we hit a microwave. Um, the, on the bottom right is the Wynn Herbarium at the University of Manitoba, and on the bottom left is a laboratory in Acadia University where I was first taught microscopy at a at a very high tech, as you can see, uh, area with a dirty cooler with a laptop balancing on top of it. Uh, this was during the biophilia residency that I participated in through Aetana. So, as mentioned in the previous slide, I was taking part in a workshop, or not a workshop, sorry, a residency in Halifax called Biophilia through um, an organization named Aetana. Um, so, I was I was further investigating the idea of biohacking and creating home laboratories uh, while I was there. So the photos that you can see up at the top are the woman who is running the, um, the residency itself. Her name's um, Alexis Williams. Um, and so while I was, while what we were working on in these images, 
are inoculating grain cultures with bioluminescent ghost fungus. Uh, we were working in a kitchen that we were using as a laboratory. Uh, as you can see, we've got tea light candles, which we're using as sterilizers for our needles. Um, any of the supplies that were used in this process uh, were purchased through Carolina, Bi Bio Carolina Biological or else through a hardware store. Uh, so while we were inoculating that bioluminescent ghost fungus, as uh, seen in the last slide, we were also invited to use the microscopes at Acadia University where we experimented with using iPhones to take microscopic photos. The image in the middle of the screen that you're looking at is, uh, was captured using proper microscopic equipment, but the one on the left was, used, was just um, my iPhone that I used. These two images are also captured through iPhone microscopy as well. The photo on the left is of burdock, and it's a specimen taken from the Wynn Herbariums collection. And the one on the right is mushroom gills put through a pocket microscope. Um, I've been captivated with the depth that one can capture with so such low technology. Now I'm going to show you a video of how one captures and shoots through an, an iPhone um, placed up to a microscope. So the specimen that I'm I'm looking or that you're looking at right here is a hyssop, which is again also taken from the Win Herbariums collection. Uh, so and the phone that I was using was an iPhone 4, just for reference. So after the toxicity workshop, Video Pool asked me to help them develop and run a bio art program, which is called the Winnipeg Bio Art Chapter. Through this program, I started running workshops in partnership with the Herbarium where we brought groups of artists in for a weekend and taught them how to use the equipment. We were mostly using microscopes, but we also were lucky enough to gain access to a camera lucida attachment. So this photo is of, or these two photos are rather, are of Bev Pike, uh, and the one on the left is her live tracing through the camera lucida attachment itself. The photo on the right is one of the drawings that she produced uh, by doing this live tracing, and it's of a Drosera. Um, she was interested in the concept of revenge in carnivorous plants and was making a book uh, of these live tracings and other drawings, etc. Um, so she, so the way that the camera lucida works is that it's it's a mirror system that's an attachment off of one of the uh, eye pieces for the microscope. So when you're looking down, one eye is looking at the plant the plant specimen underneath the microscope, and then. The other eye piece is looking at your hand, which is beside drawing. So it kind of superimposes them one over top of the other, and you're able to get this really accurate tracing of, of the plant specimen that you're looking at. This is kind of antiquated technology and really isn't used anymore in science, but, um, but it, it creates a beautiful result. The dry media workshop ran twice and culminated in exhibitions after each. The next two slides are examples of work produced from the workshops by different artists. Information on these works can be found through the Herbarium's website at www.winherbarium.weebly.com or through Video Pool's website by going through the bio art link. While I was running workshops and going on residencies, I was also creating my own technology. I became interested in the empowerment produced by biohacking and self-authorizing and decided to apply this uh, in a new body of work called Iatro Regenerism, wherein I've embarked upon building pseudoscientific laboratories in attempting to quantify the unquantifiable. I also probe to find space where society can make room for intuitive healing, responsible engagement between healer and person seeking wellness, while finding ways of regenerating the ability to autonomously cope, questioning whether it's possible to apply rational science to irrational realms of non-medical model healing. How I began was by creating a zine which functions as an analysis of a spell that I cast while I was heartbroken from a devastating breakup, and I really wanted to know whether I was the recipient of unrequited love. So I decided that by putting the spell through rigorous data analysis, I would be able to discover whether this was true or not. So. Uh, I through this analysis, I discovered that I was indeed the recipient of unrequited love, and as a good scientist, I published my findings. I'm going to quickly go through a few of the labs that I've built. This lab, functioning as a bar where I collected data using thorough medical forms, which then I analyzed and provided um, any of the participants 
who afforded me this information, individualized love potions. The next laboratory that I created was for a performance titled Graphological Tassiomancy, wherein I blended the traditional practice of coffee reading and handwriting analysis as a means for creating a prognosis or prediction for the next four months of a participant's life. Here I am, sitting in consultation with a participant and mapping their future dictated by the shape and depth of the lines created by their coffee ring. Here are examples of documented futures. When I create laboratories, I hand-build or source all of the components for the space myself. For instance, I hand-built all of these light boxes. This performance was a means for distributing herbological remedies that I created by collecting and again compiling data using medical forms and knowledge of traditional remedies for health concerns that the participants expressed. And then I created a prescription or potion for the participant. All of the botanicals used were collected by foraging through parks in Winnipeg. As I was creating specific potions or prescriptions, I would then draw maps of where in the city the participant could go to refill their prescription by foraging for themselves. The last example that I'll show you is from a show called Epidemiological Binding, where by similar data collection methods, I collected objects from participants that had negative associations, and through an invented procedure based in psychological transference, bundling, and burial, I wrapped the objects in cloth with different organic materials such as cherries or rose petals. I then buried um, these bundles in the chamber behind that you can see in the photos um, for a month planting flowers on top and allowing all of the bad energy to just gestate. After the month was over, I boiled the bundles in mordant, trapping any negative energy in the cloth and creating a print from it. Then I could give the objects back to the owner free of negativity and I keep all of the prints that were made as a means for archiving negativity. So through working with low technology, I found that one can demystify the higher tech by simply allowing yourself to brand your own form of technology and self-authorizing that. Thank you.